Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the similarities between games and real life. First, let's talk about games. In a competitive game, the beginning is always slow. As the game goes on, it begins to pick up speed and each decision has more and more value. Let's consider chess. Early in the game, your moves are more defined because your main goal is setting up for the future. It's exactly the same in real life. You go to elementary school and you learn the foundational education you need to go on to high school and so on. The decision making during this part is straightforward and does not require much input. What can be accomplished during this early phase is generally limited, but it can be optimized of course for specific goals. Spending time here efficiently will give you a huge leg up in the mid game. Next, you get to the mid game. This is the longest phase. Here's where things start to get interesting because at this point of the game, your moves are way less defined. Your choices become more dynamic, but they also hold more weight. It also becomes increasingly difficult to calculate the impact that each move might have. Take basketball, for example. As the clock ticks down, players have less and less room to take risks. This is why you always see teams trying to maximize their bench players during the mid game. They try to save their best players for the final quarter because as the game goes on, the risk continuously goes up. Keep in mind, of course, this is regarding a very competitive game Game where the score is very close. Mid game is all about momentum. You don't want your opponents to build up too much momentum because then you run the risk of running out of time to catch up. This is also why the opposing coach always calls a timeout when their opponent starts to score too many points in a row. It's an opportunity to regroup while slowing down their momentum. This is very similar to real life. As soon as you're out of high school, you have to decide what to do next. Some people go to school, some people work a regular job, and some just sit at home because they lack direction. I'll make a video in the future for anybody that's lacking direction, so don't forget to subscribe. The truth is, this is the phase you have time. This is where you need to take risks. The main point is your next decisions have a lot of importance. Make sure you think deeply about why you're going to school or why you're working. Otherwise, you'll just waste time with no purpose. Don't overthink though, because doing something is always better than doing nothing. At least doing something will put you on a path forward. This relates to the momentum point we discussed earlier. You always want to be doing something because this is what drives momentum. For example, when you first go to the gym, it's really hard. But as you keep going consistently, it gets continuously easier. This is because you'll look in the mirror and notice your body changing. This builds momentum. Your investment makes you inevitably more attached to the outcome, which then also further drives your success. This is why it's so important that you're always doing something during this phase. Don't waste any time. I want to remind you guys again to not be afraid of taking calculated risks. And no, not the kind of risks that put your life in danger. But risks such as leveraging your money to make more money. Now let's talk about the final phase, end game. By this point, every player has made an accumulation of moves that led them to their current state. At this moment, each move is extremely crucial. Every player's most important resource, time, is now very limited. What's a game that everybody knows? Let's say Call of Duty. You're playing Deathmatch. They need 500 points to win, you need 1500. You still have a chance to win this game, but you have to play perfectly while the enemy doesn't. Even if the game was closer, since it's so close to the end, points have much more weight than they did at the beginning. This is why preparation and setup is so important because of the high stakes of endgame. Once again, the same ideas apply to real life. Your end game is relative to what your goals were in the earlier phases. If your goal was to become a basketball player in the NBA and you haven't achieved it yet, your chances are much lower now than they were before. A 20 year old just entering mid game will have significantly better odds than you will. They can also afford to take more risk than you can. The effort you put in during the early phases is what will determine how successful you are in the end game. In this example, the guy who didn't put in enough effort has lost his shot, while the new guy gets his chance to try. This is the harsh reality of life, depending on your goals. If your goal is to be a doctor, you can do that later in life and still have a decent career. Just keep in mind, many goals are age dependent for most people. Just to cap things off, there are some differences between games and real life. In real life, the moral landscape will have an impact on the outcomes you choose to create. In games, there's less options to consider, making it a streamlined version of life. The point is, games serve as a great model as we attempt to analyze the reality of life and optimize for our individual success. Not many things are as absolute in nature as they are in a game, because we dictate the constraints in a game. In life, we are being constrained by the reality of the world. I hope that was useful, guys. My experience showed me that games can help explain what the best move is. If you need help making the best move, check out my website in the description below. There I'll help you dress better and coach you on what you could be doing better to improve your life. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.